Prop 14 asks you to approve bond money for stem cell research, and it's one of many questions this year that'll take us back in time. The war on terror. George W. Bush would have win Ohio. In 2004, California voters approved then Prop 71. That gave legal protection to stem cell research, hoping to find new medical treatments or cures for everything from Parkinson's to cancer. Prop 71 also approved spending $3.5 billion both to do stem cell research and to build research facilities. Most of that money went to the UC system, also private universities like Stanford. Today, that $3 billion is almost all spent. The present day Prop 14 would top up the research program with more money. A yes vote approves $5.5 billion for stem cell research and new facilities. Prop 14's money would come from a bond, and that works a lot like taking out a home mortgage. We, the taxpayers, borrow the $5.5 billion and then pay it back in installments plus interest. The analysts figure $260 million bucks a year for the next 30 years. That interest adds up to $2.3 billion for a grand total of $7.8 billion by the time the bonds paid off. Prop 14 does offer one thing that's unique, a chance for the state to make back some of this money. If the research leads to new inventions, the state gets a cut of the profits. So far, that's only raised about $350,000, or 0.01% of the bond money that we've already spent on stem cell work, so don't expect this thing to pay for itself anytime soon. Anything to do with stem cells can quickly turn into a proxy fight over abortion, because as the Mayo Clinic points out, some, though not all, stem cells come from unused human embryos that are grown for in vitro fertilization. You can read the Mayo Clinic for more on that. In your written voter guide, you can find opinions from both sides about how effective this program's been to date. A yes vote approves more bond money for stem cell research. With a no vote, the state's stem cell program would start to wind down.